Welcome back to more Spyro. We're gonna jump on to Ghost Head. Are we Dragon Going Shores to yet? Maker. What? Spyro is so edgy. Jumping on people's heads. Uh, I, I, in, in, to kind of jump back on like the, the remake talk that we were talking about last part, that we were also kind of talking a bit uh, in between uh, parts, is something I brought up. We were I brought up about this the whole idea of, of some companies who would re like a lot. It's the 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 kind of company politics where uh, they'll own a property and they'd rather just sit on it, lose money, or just not do anything with it rather than risk giving it to and selling it to another property that will uh another uh company that could make something out of it and make make a profit that they lot they would basically lose out on but <coughs> activision <laughs> yeah it's like i use the example of oh microsoft won't make a banjo kazooie game because they don't want to but they also won't sell it to someone like nintendo or anybody else because they know people want a banjo game and they'll make a shitload of money out of releasing one and then the that and that's what happened with with Activision's that they didn't make any Crash or Spyro because they didn't feel like it, and they knew that oh if they if someone made one they'd make money, so they finally decided, then yeah let's now when they finally made one they're like oh we made money out of it what do you know it was in Activision's case I want to touch on Banjo in a sec but in Activision's case it was even worse because not only would they not allow anybody to make any uh, Crash or Spyro games they blocked. Sony from negotiating for PlayStation All-Stars representation for Crash and Spyro because they wanted so much money for these characters that hadn't been seen in years and it was just un it wasn't feasible for Sony to get the rights for these one-off characters for these for this you know Smash Bros game even though the series were very dead at that point this is years before they had even started pre-production on the insane trilogy so it was very much before, just a was, no was this before skylanders even too this was a little bit post skylanders oh okay. so they would have we would have had skylander spyro in all stars for sure Damn. So we dodged um, a bullet yeah, yeah people would have been more pissed it would have been like new dante all over again oh for sure and that game but, already um, had new dante so Imagine yeah, no, I mean, it went worse than New Dante. Because like, yeah. New Dante was the moment that the PlayStation All-Stars fan base fell apart. Like, trust me, I was there. All, tw all 12 of them. They are like, this I, is I, enough. I, I, I hate that thing with the portal where they just kind of swaps back and forth. I'm like, why? I never even noticed that before. Mm -hmm. I, I actually but, uh, bought uh, All-Stars the day it came out, and so I oh, have same. the DLC, uh, the costumes that I don't think are available anywhere else. You can so. get them now. You, can, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you can buy them now. They added them at some point, but you can't play online anymore. So who cares? Right. Yeah. I, I, I didn't touch that guy because I mean, like, you can't, you, 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 you can't fix perfection. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> My man, I was, uh, I was gonna say with banjo, I do, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just being extra hopeful, but I do think something banjo is in production in some way. Um, I yes, I, I feel like the there's merchandise. They're now merchandising the character. There's so much money. Yeah, that's the, that's your hit. That's that's your big, that's the bit, like I you can buy a shirt at Hot Topic of banjo. I don't yeah. know. I'm 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 hopeful, but I don't trust them at this point. Like, cause especially because it seems like it would be so easy for them to just be like, "Hey guys," it's like like if they literally were like, "Hey guys, a new banjo game is a launch title for the Xbox One X," then people who would never even have thought to buy a uh, a Series X. Uh, xbox will suddenly be buying it like for like they, they have to know that just yes. putting out a banjo game or something on one of their systems will like put put like people who would never even think about buying one will like mm. then go out of their way to like buy buy the system just for that one game yes but the, the problem is that microsoft promises uh, are kind of hard to um not trust but it's hard for microsoft to make a promise when a lot of their promised games tend to fall through or get damaged in some way by release i watched so that if 2014 e3 recently where they had scale bound and all the other things that fell through and it was hard to watch man like oh. it, it's it'd be hard because halo infinite's been in development for years as far as we know it sounded like they restarted development at one point a la metroid prime uh it's now a game as a service. It's nothing like what it was initially planned to be because the industry changed, and they think that by the time that Halo Infinite comes out, the industry will still be that way when it probably won't. And God. they've been chasing trends for so long that I think if they were to say, hey, a new Banjo has started development, it's still probably three years off, uh, not to mention that it might run into issues. And if you say a new Banjo's in development, people are going to think Banjo-Kazooie uh, are going to hope Banjo-Kazooie while saying, oh, it's just going to be nuts and bolts. Like, they have to have something to show to inspire the confidence. Sure. Well, yeah, obviously. I mean... But then there's also the thing of, like, they've kind of, they've known 
about like what people like they know that people want a banjo and this has like, been going on for literally years so you think like say but the thing three you have years to remember, ago now they would have the been, thing like, you have to remember is that in 2018 uh, 2018 was the first year that that the xbox division existed as a division uh, mm-hmm. Xbox Xbox's division was part of Windows for the entirety of its existence until 2018. Yep. And notice that after 2018, Microsoft and Xbox rather started buying dozens of developers: Obsidian, Double Fine, um, the Ninja Ninja Theory, um, the Dead so by many Daylight others. Daylight people. Or, uh, Dead, I look, I think if they're not if, the if they're merchandising yes. the character, I don't. I think they're they're going to do something with it. I don't and know. I the, we're going to start you, with... The, 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 there's, a, there's a lot of merchandise of things that, like, they don't do. Of, like, companies, like, put out merchandise for things that they don't do, especially at Hot Topic. Like, yeah. But, but these are but, like, 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 Disney themselves love putting out stuff for, like, things at Hot Topic there's, and they don't actually do anything with. It's just, uh, oh, here's still, merchandise for... But there's like also like the cable guy thing. So I mean, I, and you're seeing the first four figures. So there's a lot more like like they're licensing the character out for even higher end. I mean, you know, quote unquote luxury products. I guess would be the first four figure. But uh, yeah, like so I, I'm so with that and the trend. So I don't think we would see a new banjo yet. I think we they would do a, a remake of uh, Kazooie and Tui as a package deal first. So, see, I could see that. Um, and the other thing I was going to say was was um, Battletoads yeah, was been, a thing. I've been like, waiting a th- to hop in with that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it's like they're they're redoing rare property, or rather rebooting yeah. rare properties in some way, and people weren't happy with Battletoads given, but people wait. weren't happy with Street Rage Four when it looked what it looked like either, and then that turned out well. So wait, I'm was Battleto- is Battletoads out? No, no, it's not. I, but it, people were like, oh, it doesn't look good, and it's like, oh, all right. I mean, I'd rather me. play it, but thanks. There's also Killer Instinct uh, went on Xbox One, and that was which that is that the, was received pretty well. Which yes. is the only game at Evo, so <laughs> <laughs> so that worked out. So that's what you got to ask yourself with Banjo, though, because Rare doesn't have that interest anymore, right? Because that's a completely different set of people. That's yeah, not. It's all yeah, it'll, it'll for sure be a different company, I would imagine. Doing yes, the, yeah. Like, they're going to license it out. Re- theoretical you have to be like, do, do I want a new Banjo at that? Like. Well, and and the thing to me would be is like there was that whole rumor that Platonic eventually shut down that Platonic was working on Banjo three, uh, and they given they shut it down, but you know that'd be a that'd be a match made in heaven if they wanted to. Um, obviously, I don't think that's going to happen, but there there are a lot of developers that are capable of making maybe not a Banjo Kazooie level three D platformer, but something that would live up to the Banjo Kazooie name at least. Yeah. I mean, like look, we're never going to get Banjo Kazooie again. Like look at, look at Spyro. I mean, this game is now developed by Activision, the original by Insomniac, and this is, you know, great. It, it, yeah, it is actually so. what you think, I mean, uh, was, it, yeah, the Crash the Crash Insane trilogy was done by Vicarious Visions, who before this may had a very a very hit-and-miss uh, selection of games, and then Toys yep. for Bob, who just before this made the very mediocre Skylanders, and this turned out very good, so it's like, yeah, I, I think it, it'd probably be best to like yeah to get a company, get a smaller company to re yeah to remake the the original banjo games to show that we can we can re like redo this exactly. so that when they go like oh we're we're now we're gonna do a third banjo game and by the people who made the remake then people will be like okay yeah we're happy about this just like but- when. The eventual new Crash and Spyro by Vicarious and Toys for Bob comes out. Then people people are like, "Oh, well, they're excited for it because it's the people who made the the remakes." Exactly. We have, I, yeah. We have full confidence now because they did a great job with the remakes. So, yeah, I, I think that would be the way it would go. I don't think we would see Rare making a banjo game. No, I mean Rare's got Sea of Thieves, and that apparently makes money somehow. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, I want I want another Viva Pinata rare. Just put a Viva Pinata game on your Xbox system, and I'll buy it. I'll yes. buy the system. Viva Pinata Conquer. Oh, they have some good pro- properties. So much. Honestly, I don't I don't want another Conquer because <laughs> because uh, Conquer like it, it's such a product of the time that I yeah. don't think like that that humor that gameplay style. It's just it's not gonna like. Fit in it's, it's it's like making a new Duke Nukem game. It's like at this point, I, it's I would yeah. have dated. I don't really think like, it'd be worse to try to make a new one. Yeah, okay, like okay, you make a good point there. Like the, given film references would would still work, and also credit to Conquer, a lot of those references still do hold. It's not like it is Gex. Um, like a lot of the Conquer references were to series or franchises that became some of the all time greats for film and TV. 
So it worked out in Conker's favor, but could you do that again? No, I don't think so. Honestly, it's not even the reference. I, I think a lot of it is like like the the, the dirty humor of oh, it, it it's that's cutesy characters saying uh, dirty oh that too words. yeah it's like yeah, yeah. Like, like that, that that's all been that's all been done to death at this point that yeah. it's like I don't think just by making it the character of Conker at the, like I think at this point there's not really much else you could do with Conker beyond just doing more of what was done before. So I'm like, at that point, yeah. you might as well just not risk it. And yeah, and again, the level designs would have to be based on, well, they wouldn't have to be based on film and everything, but if they're not, then Conquer kind of loses a bit of its soul and it just, it would just be hard. It'd be really hard to do again because they already nailed it the first time. Yeah, you're, you know, you make a very valid point there. So that might just be a once in a lifetime, but. It's like, people are always asking for a new Gex and I'm like, but Gex's references were already bad in the 90s. Swamp. I think part of it's just that I like bad. Re- <laughs> I like bad references. What can I, I say? I, I feel I'm like a sap. I think Gex mook. you could do in like I think Gex is probably a new Gex game would probably be like what like the the new Bubsy games would like the, the, that'd probably be like a good way because like the Bubsy games are supposed to be kind of like like ironic like haha yeah. you know how bad Bubsy is but now he's back but it's like the games still aren't good but I think you could yeah. probably work make an an unironic decent Gex game in the modern day like they make it like purposefully like you can probably make it fun while making it like like humor and such purpose purposefully bad and make people believe like oh yeah this is supposed to be kind of bad cringeworthy humor yeah it's just, it's tough when looking at Bubsy because it's very much like hey we you know you know that bad series is back and it's not really as bad but it's still just boring so it's like Ge- Gex would have a both an easier time and a harder time because obviously they'd have a 3D game um which would be obviously a little bit more work going into level designs than a 2D game, you know, in a in a complete vacuum speaking. Right. Um, I think it'd be, it'd be with Gex. You could make like a pretty you could make a pretty funny like self parody with Gex because it's like yeah because Gex is already kind of on the verge of self parody, but if you just kind of yeah. turn that dial up a tad. You can make some yeah. like Jimmy, like, yeah. You can even so, you can even go like, full uh, on, like fourth wall breaking and just well, be like, I'm haha, thinking, yeah. You remember I, I, how terrible those were. I, I'm thinking something like along the humor of the Brady Bunch movie, where it was they were still in the '70s, but the world they were in the '90s, so and they yeah. were still acting like they were in the '70s. I think My, you could do something like that with maybe Gex being extremely outdated, but in the modern day and everyone. Yeah, I mean, it, it would just take some talent, and, you know, saying it out loud, maybe not be the although, best. Although at that point, would... I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking of Rocco uh, Static Cling at that point. Yeah, the so game what would we're have saying to be held is, up very much. Let's get a Rocco game writing. going in the style of Gex. I'm oh, all a Rocco for game, this. That'd be awesome. Say so what? A, a Rocco game that would be awesome. I know. I uh, they should do like an SNES, uh, kind of like a Ducktales style remake of the SNES uh, Nick games. Put them out like as a Nick Arcade collection. My for some re- for, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I've just been trying to say my ideal plot for all of these things, like Duke Nukem and Gex follow ups, is just like Gex Jr. or Duke Nukem Jr., so that the original character is still behaving exactly the same, but their very secondhand embarrassed child has to put up with and do the <laughs> modern lens. Dead! Duke Nukem's still running around talking about shitting down people's necks, and his son's just like, oh, Dad, you don't do that anymore. Um, See, I, I think there, there is <laughs> there is also there is the possible issue that you could have like the quote unquote hashtag gamers being mad about that, They're like mad. The, the, being mad about like the whole thing of like oh they're like the, 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 they're like rewriting the old games because they're quote unquote not like like the whole like no they they they're they're not PC and all that shit and then it's just like I think if you if you do that like it might cause like even more kind of ruckus or whatever so it it feels very much like a damned if you do damned if you don't yeah well it's also like like there there's something to be said about like. You can have people imagine their dreams, and then if you try and create their dreams, they're going to be pissed. So, yeah. do you, like, do you touch it at all? Uh, especially with something like Gex, when Gex was literally just Family Guy non sequiturs, but even more outdated. So, like, we already have Family Guy games, yeah, so we already have Gex. This time, Gex fucked and had a kid, and now I want people to think about that. So, no, I, I, like, I, I, I really I like that I had a kid with your, who? Your idea made me laugh it, out loud. It was that's an amazing idea. I would love to see something like that. I've not thought about anything like that before, so I think that's really a fun. Good I job, think Chris. It was, uh, uh, was it? Uh, I think with Conquer, probably the best. The best thing to do with Conquer is to make a completely uncensored version of 
Like, co even worse. Like, 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 like put, 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 put in all the fucks and shit. Like, re release the game. Like, you don't have to, like, completely remake it, but put the fucks and shits back in. And I think that would be, like, something like just to, just as, like, a funny oddity of, like, oh, like, it's been censored all this time, but now you can hear it uncensored and be like, oh, it's, it, it, it's, it's basically the exact same game, but now with a added sense of, oh, this is something you may you yeah. not have played before, but it doesn't have the risk of. Like redoing or trying to redo and failing miserably at it. There's something to be said about a good bleep, though. I will say, that's um, true. So a completely uncensored one might just go a little bit overboard if that's just the selling point by itself. Which I mean, a, a remake of Conquer again, I'd be okay with. But I mean, we have it on the Xbox One anyway, so yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I'd say at that, like, pretty yeah. much just take the Xbox One version and just just put just just put put the fucks and shits back in. I think yeah. really like you don't have to like completely remaster like Live and Reloaded did just just do, just to do that just because there, there's always that thing of like when you when there's cartoon when when, when cartoons have the bleeps you just want to be like oh what does the non bleeps sound like yeah like like when people I, I, want people want a uh, Dexter's uh, rude removal uh, uncensored just just to see yeah. what it is I almost wonder if they even have that audio anymore they'd probably have to uh, get. Um... Seaver, yeah, in. but they'd have to get him back to re-record Andrew. It probably yeah. well, I'd say might sound. It'd probably sound weird because it's been like twenty years. So it's yeah. like their voice. I mean, so much of the voices were just kind of sped up anyway. So that's true. Yeah, yeah. you could you could kind of tweak it a little bit in post. And now it's Misty Bog, the the the, the, the supposed main theme. It's like, well, why, why did they why did they decide this? I mean, it's an, it's an amazing theme, but like, I wonder why they decided Misty Bog was going to be the main theme of Spyro, so to speak. I, yeah, that that really did, because uh, I I have the uh, the theme on my PS4, so I hear it all the time. I'm like, oh wait, this is the main theme. Kind of a weird level choice. Just to echo what you said. Oh, look, there's Rocco. <laughs> Attack frogs. Stuart Copeland doesn't answer my Facebook messages, but I've been asking him weekly for seven years, so hopefully sometime we'll get a response for you on that. I, I think this speaking... is also kind of the this the, acts as the example, of, like because I mentioned this in one of the previous parts, which is that uh, I, I I do like the remixed uh, songs in this game, but as as opposed to like the Crash Insane trilogy uh, music, where I think a lot of those songs do surpass the original uh, versions, I don't think any of these versions uh, surpass. Uh, the original uh, instrumentals, like like I would rather listen to uh, original Misty Bog over this, but like for Crash, I would listen to uh, the Crash Three, a uh, Hub World, or the Ice World, uh, the Ice World uh, music from Crash Two. Like I'll I'll listen to the insane version of that like over uh, the original any day. Yeah, I think I think there's something to be said um, with Crash. I've never felt Crash had super memorable music. That's just me. Um, like it's all you know, it's good, it's passable, it, it serves its purpose, um, but it never really stuck out to me. Whereas Spyro's, like a lot of Spyro songs, did obviously because they're made by an actual professional, acclaimed musician, uh, as opposed to somebody who is composing game music, who is like, still very seasoned. Hey man, but obviously, they composed Rugrats. Yo, know, well, oh, yeah, because funnily you say that because well, he he didn't compose it, he didn't compose Crash completely, but one of the producers was uh, Mark Mark Mothersbaugh, who was uh, who was the singer of Devo, and yeah, he worked on Rugrats, he worked on some films like Thor Ragnarok and other Lord and Miller projects. Oh yeah, it's like, yeah. So it's like he, there is there was like there were two legendary music uh, people at this time who made uh, like who were working on Crash and Spyro, but it, well, yeah, Copeland made all the music uh, in these three while Mother. Bob was just a producer. Like he, and yeah. I thought he was the composer, but no, there was another. I forget the guy's name, but there was another guy who was the actual composer. It's and then Josh Mansell. Yeah, that's the dude. It's it's amazing when you look at at Universal's game library back in the day and see how much money Mark Cerny blew on all of this shit. Like they, he is, he said before that they gave him a blank checkbook and he just spent every dollar he could. And you can see it when you see who they get to compose some of these games, who they get involved in in production. And it's just amazing. <laughs> like, ask, yeah. Hey, I respect that hustle. Like, I'd love to ask how much they paid Stuart across all four games that he did, just to be like, yeah, but why did you do it? Like, what was your incentive? And he'd be like, oh, ten million dollars. It's like, oh, okay, <laughs> blank check, baby. It's just, Thanks it's just for amazing. Releasing. Uh, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, and I also like I know like like because this was still at the time when voice acting was pretty like like they're still trying to get voice acting like figured out but like Spyro yeah, just, yeah. especially two and three especially have like a like a who's who of like voice acting like Ted like like Tom, Tom the, well, the, I mean like Tom Kenny this was before uh, this was before SpongeBob it was the same year SpongeBob came out so this is before he became like yeah big but then you had like uh like uh, well Clancy Brown was Clancy Brown was like he was that was a uh, like like he was Lex Luthor by this point so. Uh, yeah. Then you got like, yeah, Carlos Cal- 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 Rocky, who's been in a lot of stuff. Uh, um, and yeah, Spyro Three had pa- Pamela Hayden, who was Millhouse. Uh, she yeah, she was in that. So it's like yeah, you got there's a lot of like pretty big names. Yeah, and it's also interesting because especially in the '90s, like you get that who's who, but it's also none of them were probably super expensive at that point because voice acting wasn't like hey, here's Troy Baker and that's it. Um, it also wasn't you know performance capture, which is why we get Troy Baker. And that's it. So many times because he's also an actor on top of being a voice actor because they're very two very different fields. Even if they cross over, oh, did did a, did a Universal make Blasto? Uh, they. I don't know. Let me look it up. Me release for you, thank. Blasto was no. Yeah. That was that was actually owned by Sony. Yeah, yeah, because, because then with that one had that one has Phil Hartman, who is like an actual legend. So it's so it's like that's another that, that's another like huge. Uh, get yeah. for them. God, I miss the I 90s when my favorite voice actors didn't get laid off from YouTube channels in the public eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Shout I... out to the four homies who will know what I'm talking about. I felt like a lot of that stuff back then was like, we need to legitimize these video games. Let's get Phil Hartman and the drummer from the police in here. <laughs> Worked a lot better for Spyro, but Blasto... D- does anyone like any aspect of Blast Hill? Phil Hartman, I'm I'm sure it, probably. <laughs> I'm sure someone does. I was always a Jersey Devil kind of guy. Mm, I can see that. It was like I, I had a, I had a PlayStation jump jam, jam pack disc that had Blasto, Jersey Devil, uh, Tomba. It was like all the, all those oh, like yeah. weird PlayStation uh, platformers just all that's, on one disc. That was a, that was amazing. That's the one that had the weird Japanese Metal Gear Solid video, right? That's right. Yeah, and, yeah, and it, what, it, it was, what's funny was that there was also a trailer for Spyro One, and even though I own Spyro One, I would just always watch that trailer. Yep, Smash me too. Spyro. I was playing Einhander or watching that video, and it was pretty much all I did with that disc. Oh God! <laughs> God. He said, "Smash Spyro." Oh, I'll smash Spyro. She you know what I mean. I don't know what you mean. Please explain. Subscribe to my channel, please explain, and I'll tell you later. <laughs> what do you explain? You explain about uh, all the different ways to say please? No, just just the spire smush. No, please explain, the and then Chris just goes on a rant about why he covers his dog in peanut butter. No. Well, he just needs to lick it off, and then he'll be free. <laughs> it's a challenge. Scooby, no. <laughs> the plot of Scoob, too. If they don't call it Scooby Dooby Two. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write a bad letter. I hope Scoob Two is the new Scooby Doo cast, meeting the current official <laughs> Scooby Doo cast in like the movie and just fighting it out. I think no, oh. it's it, 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 it's it's them it's them swearing them out. <laughs> just I'm getting mad. God, what was it? Was it Looney Tunes back in action? Where yeah, that was Looney Tunes back in action. Where to, yeah, Matthew Lillard. <laughs> oh, that the was a irony. Great moment. Yeah, that's ironic. <laughs> oh, that's why I'm kind. Of, this, this, this is gonna be a weird tangent, but I'm I kind of like I'm like yeah, like the, the, the those voice actors are better than the ones they got in the new movie. But I I feel like the whole the kind of like them being upset that they're not in, especially with especially with literally because I'm like you were literally a Hollywood actor who came in here, <laughs> so I'm like it just kind of feels weird. Like oh, you you lost your role. It's like why didn't they lose. pay me more? It's just, it just feels like a it's a weird thing to get uh, upset about, especially when you were in that position to begin with. Uh, but yeah, classic "fuck you got mine" syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't really that good anyway, so they they lucked out. I want them to make a Spyro Junior where Spyro and Elora have a kid together, and it's half Fawn Centaur, half Spyro, and okay. he just speaks in fax machine noises. 
who 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 plays Spyro? Thanks for Jr. having me. Goodbye. I'll who, give who you one hundred dollars to kickstart who, development. I, I need to know who uh, plays Spyro. Jr. Well, if Tom Kenny is Spyro, if, if Tom Kenny is Spyro, then it's got to be um, oh, what's his name? D. Bradley Baker. <laughs> Um, I was I was thinking I was thinking get get Carlos Ellis Rocky back and just have Spyro Jr. be <laughs> Spyro One like it's voice. A, it's a puberty thing. Like he goes through puberty, but he's just <laughs> Spyro One voice until he's like seventeen and a half, and then boom! Now it's Tom Kenny. Uh, it turns into turns into low. I was about to say lowbrow SpongeBob, but it's more like it's more like a cooled down Ice King. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank thank you guys for joining these parts. Yeah, thanks for having me. Who who will be in the next parts? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't finished that. Yet. You'll you'll you'll. you'll uh, I'm 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 not I'm I'm not. You're 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 not my dad. I don't have to tell you. Okay, bye. Bye. Uh, another fun day of being Stefan's dad complete.